which would probably be about my age <laughs> anymore. And we became friends with them over the years. Good folks, we really liked them a lot. And after probably five or 10 years, we found out that uh, there was a reason to like them. Uh, they were members of the Lord's Church. And we became better friends over the years. Uh, been to their house several times. Uh, just good, good folks. But I've noticed over the past probably 10 to 15 years, <clears throat> they really became serious about their Christianity. And as far as I could tell, and I'm not their judge, they were very sound in their Christianity. And uh, the wife had been into a lot of bad health problems and so forth, and her husband was taking care of her, and they did the snowbird business a lot, would go down south in the winter. Well, like I said, this all happened in the last couple of years. She'd gone to the hospital and it ended up being the last place she would go. And she was there for about two months. And he had called me and told me about her several times. And uh, it, it had been the last probably 10 years. We'd had a lot of talks. He'd even come over to the office and we would have deep, profound talks about Christ. Um, I think he found somebody he could confide in a little bit, and he enjoyed doing that. And I was at the office, and my secretary paged me and said, it's such and such, his wife just died. And, you know, that's the phone call you really want to take. So I took the phone call. And he told me that this is the first time he could get a call in to me that she'd passed away. And they were in probably the 85 to 88-year-old range, been married for 60-plus years, were the best of friends. And he told me, he said, Kevin, I want you to know, and you got to remember, I'm hearing an old man's voice, um, a shaky quivering person's voice. And he said, Kevin, I want you, to, I want you to know something. I was there for her. He said, I was there for her. I went and visited her every day. I held her hand every day. And I want you to know I was there for her. And there's not a whole lot I could say. I was just listening. And he said, I want you to know that I've been there for her for the last 10 years. And said, the last time she got sick, the doctors told me she's probably not going to make it, but we can try. And he said, no, let her go. And he said, Kevin, I just want you to know I was there for her. I held her hand that entire day. And, and I'm... I'm listening and I'm crying this time. And he said, I want you to know I was there for her. I held her hand. I watched her heart stop beating on the monitor, but I was there for her. And he said, I watched her take her last few breaths, but I was there for her. And I said, that's great because nobody wants to die alone. And he said, I was there for her for her. And then he proceeded to tell me a few other things, and I told him I'd see him shortly. And he said, just remember, I was there for her. Well, I hung up the phone, and then it occurred to me why he had told me that so many times. Because one time, he was at the office across from the desk from me, and he broke down. We were talking about Christianity and our families and lives. And he said, I had so many things wrong earlier in my life. He said, I was a Christian. But he said, I wasn't much of one. He said, I didn't take it seriously. I took my job seriously. 
I traveled a lot. My job was the most important thing to me. And he started to break down as he told me this. As he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I wasn't there for my family. And he started to wail and sob at my desk. And he confessed so many things that had gone wrong in his life that he wasn't there. Most of his family was a mess. One of his sons had become just like he was. The old cats in the cradle song. He turned out just like me. One of his sons had the same priority, the same thing, the same job. Died in his 50s, not as a Christian. And to hear the old man sob at my desk broke my heart. I never want to hear myself do that. I'll have my own regrets. I know that. So Preston and Kelsey and Cam and Sarah, when I preach a little bit or get what you call preachy, there's reasons that I do that because I love you. I want to try to keep things straight and right and the way they're supposed to be. I want to try to be there for you. But this old man cried his heart out. I'll never forget the wailing that he did telling me of one of his children that had turned to homosexual lifestyle. And it's all because of him not being there. He and his wife were not faithful Christians when they should have been. Now he knows that they'll be judged on their own, but his influence helped cost them their souls. And can you imagine that? Now he's been forgiven because he's a faithful Christian. But you can't go back and change what occurred. And like I said, I never, ever want to hear anybody have to say those words again. I cried like a baby all the way home that day. And I remember why he told me I was there for her because he wanted to emphasize he had not been there for her and his kids earlier in life. And it was killing him. And he literally wept and sobbed and wailed on my desk as he told me these things. So I'm not trying to bring anybody down and, and depress you, but I want to make you think. When you think you're not there as an example for somebody or it doesn't matter, it sure does. And if you could have been there that day and seen that old man sob and wail, it would have broken your heart, maybe shaped us all up a little bit. I know it opened my eyes. I'll have my own regrets. But I couldn't imagine having that on my heart to know that I could have been there and I wasn't, that I could have helped my family and I didn't. And it was tough. It was tough. And there might be some here in the audience tonight, maybe you've had that in your life, and maybe now's a good time to start. And you don't have to come forward. I mean, that's between you and God. But if you want the prayers of the church, that's what we're here for. You maybe aren't a Christian, and maybe you've spent your life like he did, that it wasn't important. Yeah, your kids, your wife, your husband, they're on their own when it comes to being judged, but your influence is unknown how much power you have. There's only one thing worse that I know that you could have with that thought, and that is to be in hell for eternity and have that thought forever. Imagine that. Now God promised, though, he offers forgiveness and hope and he said, heaven will wipe away all tears, so you won't have that thought. Don't know how he's going to do it, but he promised that he would. So if there's anybody here tonight that would like to become a Christian and start things new, or just to have a prayer, if you want to become a Christian, you don't even have to come forward. That's just something that men have contrived to make it easier. You can hold your hand up. We can baptize you right after services. It doesn't matter. But if you need to do something, do it now when we stand and sing. The voice of the Savior.